All right, so I don't fully know what's on the agenda today, except for right now we're going to fix the front splitter. So I'm going to show you a little clip here, and before anybody wants to jump to conclusions and whatever else, yes, I am fully aware the car was understeering because I locked the brakes and I should have got off the actual brakes and I could have, you know, whatever. It would have corrected, but it's all through, you know, learning, blah, blah, blah. I knew what I had to do. I've done it numerous times. I just, I don't know, this time we were on lap six. Tires just locked easier than I thought. Tires are beyond heat cycled. It is what it is. And I'll show you the damage real quick. So all that you saw that I ended up doing was just this. Now I need to put my little guard that I got for the front here. I just didn't put it on the car yet because it wasn't in. And my last splitter was basically uh, three millimeters. And I glued two, three millimeter pieces together to make six mil, excuse me. And when I ordered this, I was curious. I was like, man, it's a little more expensive than last time. But it's because this is actually six mil. So I glued it together and it became basically half inch total. So it's a bit thicker. I've got some stuff over there to put on the front of it. But so here's what it, the splitter has normally looked like. It was bigger. So I shrunk it down a little bit because the 245s did give me a little bit of extra grip in the front. And I didn't want any more front downforce at the moment because the cars felt pretty neutral as is. So we're going with smaller splitter. And here's what the tire spats used to be. Now you can see they're a little bit different as far as covering the tire. So this side's already done, and we're just gonna show you how I kind of walk through this. I built the same two by two L angle is there. These are not gonna be the final hardware, we'll get there, but. Um, and then I took, basically, I made a four inch tall piece of Alumilite, three mil to be a taller end plate. And as you can see, there's a tire spat. It probably looks a little weird with that yellow paint pen there, ignore that. I might still reshape it a little bit. Man, it's hard to get a good visual of what this looks like with that. Um, and you can see, I basically got a bolt there, bolt there, bolt there, and I'm using that one up in the fender. And this little bit that wasn't contouring here, I basically took the heat gun and just kind of meshed it up there. Now this is um, 16th as opposed to the other stuff that I used was eighth. So this does, you can see it, if I push on the very edge of it, I can push it. it gets towards the, so I don't know if this is even gonna like do anything at all. It's a much bigger spat than before. We'll kind of experiment with it. Um, oh, and I got one right down there. So that's how that is. So I'm just gonna pretty much goal right now is to take this side, make it look like that side, put the splitter rods back on and uh, get it going to be what it should look like. And as of right now, I've got two brand new RT660s in the front, which I had. And then I just got, I just ordered some brand new uh, 225 RT660s for the rear, which will get me through the last two events of the year. And then we will, uh, figure out where to go from there. In case anyone's curious, um, here's my passenger wheel. So the track, my local track is mainly counterclockwise. So what I think happened was, and you can see this, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but essentially it looks like, again, we normally don't do that many hot laps, but there's no one on the track and we are just allowed to do what we wanted at that point. So I just kind of stayed out there. So I'm pretty sure what happened was tire pressure kept inflating, inflating, and the center of it essentially just kind of bubbled and you can see where it was just way too hot. And it's also when I locked it. Um, same thing with the driver's side tire. So the tires have been heat cycled, I think like six times, seven times. So they're shot anyways. I shouldn't have stayed at the track as long as I did. The rear was kind of coming a little looser and I was just sort of having a good time to be honest, regardless of lap times. So let's just get started on the splitter. All right, so the wheel's off. And let me just kind of show you what the thought process was. I had my buddy Matt come over the other day and that's how we sort of like came up with the idea together on what we were gonna do and we had some, I had some stipulations and I'm just gonna show you them now. So regardless, I've got quick disconnects on my bumper here, right? Um, on both sides, I wanted to retain it being quick disconnect. So I would just pull the pin up on the two splitter rods and for lack of better words, I could just pop these two buttons and pull the bumper off. The only extra thing I had to do was I had to remove one of the end plates because the old tire spat I couldn't like flex the bumper enough. It would just smash into it and whatever. So realistically, two button pushes, pulled a little quick pin, and then I would just zap out three Allens real quick, drop the end plate and the bumper would come off. It took me maybe maybe a minute if that. So we had to keep that in mind, or that was the game plan to keep that in mind, right? So we had a bunch of ideas. So essentially on the other side, and we're gonna go through this, basically I'm gonna have one of these going through um, in here, so I'll remove this one, but the other ones will stay attached throughout here. 
And then I'll basically get some sealant there. Um, I'll basically just have to remove the one up here from the fender, the one right here, and then it'll stay on the bumper. And I chose the thinner ABS because it does flex, which might sound counterintuitive, um, but with it being able to flex, I should be able to pull it off again with just removing one tire spat. So a little bit extra on as far as, you know, removing the bumper, but nothing crazy. And hopefully it's just, you know, nets good results and we'll just see how it goes here. And man, I have a car like, in case you're curious what that's missing, this is the old molding that was on when I wrecked the car. I've got another one in the shed, I just don't want to put it on yet. And this is like bulging out a little bit and it was kind of touching the fender. So I ended up just ripping that off the track, super dirty. You can't even see the Honda sticker that I put on there. Can't wait to actually clean this and see it clean up. But so, and I do have foam underneath here just to catch any extra, you know, gap, whatever. So let's start by, I'm gonna have to, roughly get where this goes to match the other side and use the heat gun. So, I mean, this does bend, but it won't stay. So the heat gun works fantastic for this ABS. All right, so it's bolted down there. And now what I need to get this to do is come up and you can see it's just, you know, whatever. So we're gonna heat it up around back here while I hold this and uh, try to get it to contour as much as I kind of can. And we'll go from there. It's not gonna take super long. All right, so now let's just heat it up. A second set of hands would definitely be, you know, convenient here, but we should be able to just do that. I got it on pretty much max airflow here. Just kind of doing the joint where I want to bend it. Already starting to bend. Uh. All right, it's the 12 by 12, so I just kind of marked some dots down the line there for uh, six inches to split it in half. Doesn't have to be super critical here, but. Since this stuff is thin, I'm just using some metal tin snips. And it basically eats through this stuff like paper. And some of it will get chopped off. Um, as you saw the other side, to kind of match the tire contour a little bit. So I'm not, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm trying to cut a straight line here, but. for a second let it cool down so I got this welding glove on just to sort of take some of the heat because the plastic kind of like metal in essence it will spring back so I'm just sort of holding out here for a second well it looks all right there let's see here ah uh, damn what am I doing oh this is live right you can see the indent that it's causing there the heck did we do again over here? That's more just like a, Matt and I made more like a 90. Well, let me try one more piece and uh, we'll see here. So it's pretty good down there. There's a little bit of a weird lump there. I think we can get that out. I'm gonna heat it up later after I get the rest of the contour down. So now it's kind of a, I guess somewhat simple-ish. I've got my old tire spat here, and I can kind of see where, you know, it was bolted. As you can tell, there's tons of uh, random holes. This bumper's been through all kinds of stuff here. So, I'm gonna kind of just stick this back in there, just to get a rough, okay. 
So it looks like that hole, this hole, and this guy. All right, so now I'm just gonna work my way from bottom to top. And I wanna do this that way I can kind of keep, I can drill my hole accordingly and suck it sort of in where it's gonna go. So, I'm just kind of eyeballing this here. So because this stuff is so bendable, hey oh. A little bit of an angle, totally get it. Brush the debris out for the moment. So this bottom one is really just spat into the lower little lip. And uh, I guess that kind of just keeps my lip in place. All right, so for those of you that watched my built the wide body fenders, you remember that I left the fender liner tab or the most front one. And because I had this in mind. So I basically just put a riv nut in it and that's just gonna kind of suck up there. So sort of the same thing that uh, I guess you could say I've been doing to the other ones. And that's just sort of, cause it's flexible, I'm gonna pull it back, roughly eyeball where it is. So now that the hole is there, this one, you know, has the rib nut behind it. So the other ones in the bumper have nuts. This will be part of the, I guess you could say, easy quick disconnect. All right, so that just goes up in there. It's going to take some of its contour, which the other side did too. And if anything, this one was worse than the other one. I'll show you why. And, and I want to, before I show you, when I say worse... I don't mean it's bad. I'm gonna have to just use a little more massaging with the heat gun, not the end of the world. See that giant gap right there? The other one had it too. Not as much light coming through it, but again, simple heat gun, pushing the back and it'll just contour. What I could have done was I drilled this a little too high. I should have probably drilled it a little bit lower, which would allow this to maybe contour a bit better, but it is what it is. So let's just simply heat gun it now and push this in. Well, I just discovered uh, a bunch of footage was just gone. If basically if I'm recording my phone and someone calls, it just sort of, I guess, halts that. So what you missed was I, basically a four inch tall piece of Alumalite. The spacing is driving me a little crazy. It's not exactly equal. Um, and it's because of how those are, it is what it is. So here's how this looks right now. And here is what I kind of struggle with on the other side. Yeah, we still got to bend this in, but I got to figure out how much to cut, right? There's like a ton of excess. We don't need all that. So what I did last time was sort of just from the edge of the tire, kind of drew a, a rough, as you see rough, it gets crazy. Try to hold my hand as steady as possible. All right, not perfect. You can see it's not much of a, and then I sort of just went down it and we'll see what it looks like. So again, I'm gonna cut it with the uh, metal shears. Just it cuts pretty easily. Whoops. And uh, we'll just kind of keep taking a gander at it. All right. And again, I'm gonna shake this more with a flat disc. Let's just take a gander at how high the other side is. Looks like I kinda, and again, this is not, I'm not any crazy aero science guy here, but looks like I kinda angled it a little bit below there, which finger about there. So, all right, let's just kinda keep chopping. I'll grab the flap disc here in a minute. everything off uh, she's kind of shaped 
Fresh is gonna look right now, so let's, I'm gonna respray this. Um, we gotta paint the actual Lumalite here. So, and we're gonna, you know, obviously just kind of clean up some of the edges. So essentially to take this off, like I said, it should be somewhat quick. Um, I wanted to remove the bumper. I would take out this, because this is being held in, right? With the wheel still on, I should be able to I'm just get an Allen in here. These aren't the final, these are not the final bolts that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use these that you see on the outside, but the inside I'm gonna cut down the bolts a little bit. Pretty quick. All right, so last event I also dipped a tire off the track, which I've dipped them off the track. It's not usually been an ordeal, but this one time I dipped it and uh, as you know, the, the laps were done and then I ended up uh, sitting around for an hour, got time to go home, went to go drive. I was like, man, this wheel is really difficult to steer. Maybe I just, you know, maybe I bumped the toe out. The wheels looked okay. So I went to go get a line today and something just fell off about it. Threw it on the rack and everything's good. Caster, camber, everything's good except for the driver's side wheel, which is what dipped. And uh, during our testing here, I'm gonna try to show this the best I can. So one hand wheel, the wheel is currently centered, but I'm gonna use one finger. This is not gonna come through, but it is, it's got some effort, way more effort. And the car is unloaded right now, it's jacked up. Let's go right. It's weird here. Like right here, the wheel feels pretty loose. Then I get back here and it feels, especially just feels going really stiff. So what's gonna happen right now is I'm gonna drop my rack. I have another rack that I ordered a long time ago from Rock Auto when I was trying to put the Quaif rack together. I ordered it thinking it was a DX-HF ratio rack or, or housing so I could put the, uh, the Quaif, you know, pinion or rack inside of it. Didn't work out and I've just held on to this extra spare rack. So I'm going to pull it and let's just kind of resume there. I'm, I'm going to assume somehow I bent the rack. Maybe the tie rod. I don't know. The tie rods look fine. So I've got brand new tie rods just sitting here. I've got a brand new rack. Let's just pull this rack out. Rack is bent right over there. Whee! All right, so cars all together for the most part. I just had two other things to basically button up before the next track day. And that was when I got the car realigned after the rack swap, um, we have a, a, it looked like a small coolant leak. I mean, it's not even on the floor, but I can see a little bit on the traction bar and I smell coolant a little bit, but coolant level's not lower or whatever. And I guess it looks, what I'm about to show you, way worse than it is. So I don't know which line it is because, well, uh, yeah, you'll see in a second. So I'm just gonna retighten them all up or loosen them all, retighten them all up. So took the intercooler off and you can see like, it's just kinda, yes. So what I think it is, so when I touched on the alignment rack, I can only get up to the top, none of this was off. Uh, there was a little bit of a weep from here, like very little, again, it's not even on the floor. It's almost like it, it's such a slow weep, but it might've been happening for a while and it's just kind of been burning and whatever. So to get on a little bit different of a little rant here, I think in the winter time, what I'm really gonna do is, and it's not mess with the car so I can drive it still, but as far as messing with it, I know it makes no sense what I just said, but I might just cut this off, get rid of it, move the intercooler that I have, because right now the intercooler sits basically right here, move the intercooler as far forward as I can and if I just gotta extend these pipes a little bit, then not a big deal. And I'm going to maybe cut this, cut this, and try to move the radiator also more forward, which it might end up being, you know, sitting like basically where this bar is. Um, just so I can maybe run some of these lines a bit easier. Not that they don't work, they've been running, you know what I mean, for two years. And every so often I will just kind of give a little tightening to them. I've uh, never seen how to leak this bad, but I think I might just do it just so I can easily access it. I mean, like, look at this line here. Like, it's coming around, and I, I mean, I made it, right? But I made it because this can't come out any further because I've got a block off plate. But if I move everything forward, I should be able to get these lines a little bit tighter. Not tighter, but a little bit easier to get to and whatever the case is. They don't want to be so small and cramped. 
or the option would be to just run a full-size radiator. But I can't run a full-size radiator because if you look right now, I mean, the radiator is flush basically with how the, uh, the wastegate and stuff is. So if I could run, an, I guess, a radiator that like starts right here, but I don't think the inner cooler will probably be out of the bumper. I don't know. That might be a winter project to experiment with, but. So as of right now, I'm just gonna tighten these up, rebolt the front of the car up, and uh, I do have a TPS issue to work through too. It's kind of like randomly jumps, so I might just kind of tweak that for a second. And uh, yeah, I figured I'd just show you some stuff here. All right, so some people dislike tire letters. I won't lie, I was kind of, I don't wanna say I was one of those people, but like I don't dislike them. I just really, I don't know, wasn't really for or against them. And after I did them for the first time in my car, well, I started to grow on them. And then now I've, I think personally, my CRX looks weird without them. So these usually last the whole season as far as, I mean, I'll get like, let's say seven, like seven actual track days out of them. So they last for sure. Uh, basically just grab some acetone and I'm just sort of wiping the whole face of the wheel down. So here's the stencil now. I'm gonna find where Falcon on this tire already is. It's already in that realm. So I'm going to peel it. You could use stencils. I might move to that in the future. I mean, this is a stencil, but actually one that I don't gotta keep printing and reusing. All right, so just so you can see, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's cracking a little bit, right? But you can read what it says pretty much no problem. And this has been on here, you know, like I said earlier, that many events. And you gotta figure the tire, you know, it's got low pressure, expands the, the tire I'm constantly messing with. So I think it does a pretty good job. Now, that being said, I sprayed this spot here with some, this is what it is. And that's the color right here. Gloss khaki. Right here, spurred a satin khaki. And this is what I normally would use, except I cannot find this anywhere in town anymore, and this is basically empty. And this was camouflage. So I think what I'm gonna end up going with is, might sound crazy, but I think the gloss khaki, which is the same brand, same like everything, and I know the adhesion works out pretty well. Now, if you notice the color of the word Falcon, right? Like I said, I sprayed it with this. You can already hopefully see this apparently is the same color, but it's not because after it dries, and notice whatever it dries at, it does not look exactly, um, does not look exactly the same. Like it dries and it looks like, oh, that's not gonna, I don't know. And then after like one session of the track, it like, I don't know, between the sun, the heat of the tire, you know, I don't know. So I'm gonna go with the gloss khaki and just sort of see what it uh, does. It's probably gonna look weird at first, but after the track day, I'll try to update this video and we'll see what it ends up looking like. So, I already peeled them. I put blue tape all around it and I've got this cutout that I will show you. I'll put over it. So now that I'm going to put gloves on and just sort of push the sticker down, just because if you look, there might be like some areas, right? Like right here. And I mean, some will bleed through. It just is what it is, right? It's not gonna be perfect, but the better you can get the sensor to lay flat and stay there, the better. But I do notice you put too heavy of a coat, bad idea. For numerous reasons, it will end up flaking off. And two, it like really finds its way underneath the stencil and just makes it look worse. Just a light, not even full coverage. All right, so I did three light coats. It's been sitting now for 25 minutes. Whoa. Didn't mean to pull all the whole thing off, but okay, it's a, it's a good sign, I guess, so far, right? It, it didn't rip anything. Use that, don't try to do it that way. There we go. I still try to pull it off a little gently, right, in case it's still kind of wet. I mean, it shouldn't be, but. I'm trying to walk through this live here without stopping. Oh, shit. Here's the hard part, right? I'm gonna try to do this with one hand the best I can. 
put the camera up, it's already all the way out. Sometimes you get stuck. You know, I just will break the, right, I'll just kind of break it and I'll go back. There we go. All right, that's fine. Now let's peel this corner. All right. See what I'm saying? How that's kind of, whoop. So if it did that, it should be adhered pretty decent, right? Can try to pull all that again, but usually a little more gentle with this, but here we go. And then for that little A, just use like a, I don't know, a little pick tool, just something. we go so that came out pretty decent fingers crossed it adheres well and uh do the second right, side so this is gonna wrap that video or this video up uh i know it's all over the place i've had a couple people just tell me just make videos just to make videos because i end up doing a bunch of stuff i just don't end up recording so here's a quick view of what the tires look like again that color will change i'm not gonna lie to you guys i am a little skeptical on if all of it's gonna stay on there that well there was a couple of areas that it didn't peel up yet, but I don't, I don't know how I'm feeling about it. But um, yeah, so tomorrow is a track day. Today is the 30th. I've got uh, John and Andrew coming down from, well, coming up from uh, El Paso. They normally race at ASR. Uh, they're coming out to give Sandia a shot just to see what it's like. I'm pretty sure John will make a video on it. I'll probably try to make a video this time. This is the last event of the year here. And then ASR still has one more. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns on what I just did or any input or just want to BS, just throw it down in the comments below and I'll see you guys uh, for the next video, whatever it may hold.